aircraft is ready to land runway one, you will, a will be able to see this map on the navigation display. Because this map is, uh, this map and several others are, look, are inside the database of the aircraft. So the pilot knew that when he arrived, when he arrived to um, Brisbane, he will know that uh, he will make the black uh, arrive, like a, like a six, this one, like a six alpha arrive. So he already knew which one. So he programmed the, he configured the the, the aircraft there in Melbourne, not now. So the aircraft already knows that he will land on runway one, right? Then, after that, let's see. All right, you already checked the navigation display and you are called the, the tower. The aircraft is already uh, known that all these, these procedures, so you won't, you won't be, you, you, you are not necessarily need to fly the airplane because it's in your part. The other part will don't like all these many reps. But you must control it, you must know what the aircraft will do. So for that, the first thing that we do right before the top of descent, which you, you are right on top of your cruising speed, cruising altitude, and you're going down, and you are starting to descend your airport. There's a signal right uh, here, we are right back, etc. Here's a signal, D, D, which is top of descent, which is from this point on, the aircraft shall start uh, dying, you know, safe way. So this drawing here would be like this, here. and after you see this, you must uh, tell the aircraft which altitude you are going to do. You are going to fly after the descent, because he knows that he must uh, descend, but he doesn't know until what altitude. If there are any restrictions, which, which altitude is the runway? So you check on the chart. You may see that uh, after black. We can go to moving, then turn left till bed. And this bed has a signal uh, that's written at or below 8,000 feet. So in that point, we must be at or below 8,000 feet. We, if we fall to Glen, uh, if we fall to Jeru, no, sorry, but I'm not All right, only that is the, <coughs> it's the only restriction. At or below 8,000 feet and vertical. If there is another restriction, we must follow it. But since this case there's not, there's none, we can simply land, simply check for the proper um, uh, sorry, uh, interception, yeah. interception of the runway, which is more or less like 250, 200, just thousand five hundred feet. So the the same. To Two thousand five hundred feet. All right, and this altitude is the one that you are able to intercept the runway and start the final descent, which will be like the gears down, the flaps full, and you are going to land itself. Then this this altitude here, you put right here in this little square there, the little screen. You adjust it to. 2,500 feet. It will, it will make the airplane start his descent until 2,500. He will not pass under 2,500 feet. So if there was another signal around the, another written around the star saying um, 600 or above, you should put 600 feet because the aircraft shall not fly under the 6,000 feet. It was there, but it's not. It's not. So there are no restrictions. So we are, after the top of descent, until 2,500, you don't, don't need to fly the airplane. Just keep on uh, monitoring if it's doing well. But since we are doing a perfect situation, it will do well. Notice that, <laughs> otherwise we must take control. Perfect, except for two dead pilots. Sorry? Yeah, so the situation is perfect, situation is perfect. except for two dead pilots. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> except dead pilots, but... Besides that, it's the perfect situation. Uh, you see there's also speed limitations. In Jiro, for example, there's EIS at two, 230 knots. 
to be indicated their speed at 250 knots. And then, which is the final approach, approach is 185 knots. So in these both cases, in these both uh, points, we must be slower at, than the speed that are shown. That are shown. So for that, we must, to maintain the speed, we must take off our spoilers, which are things located here, this one, this is the spoiler. We'll push them, and in the wing, there's a, a pieces of the wing that comes up and increases the drag of the aircraft. So it starts to, to lose speed and lose, lose, loses lift. So we lose, with this, we lose speed. Also, when you are about Jamro or Beijing, we started to put our flaps up. The flaps are a mechanism that increases our lift in slower speeds, because the aircraft flies because of the speed of it and the shape of the wing, but mainly because of the speed. And if the aircraft is too slow, you lose lift, it will fall like a brick. So we need to increase our lift by putting the flaps up. And these flaps are located here. These are the little part that you start pushing the wing starts to expand the side, let's say. And the lift starts to, to increase and the speed decreases. And so you can land with slower speeds. Uh, so that, that's in the picture there, the flaps. Yes, flaps, here. Uh, flaps, here. Yeah. 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 And this one, the flaps. See? During the flight, they are during the flight, it is uh, flat. flat. The wing is not using their flaps. Yeah. But during the approach, so we can approach with less speed, we put our flaps, right? Uh, we cannot la uh, lower our landing gear uh, still, because the landing gear provides too much uh, drag, because it's not very dynamic. So you see all the uh, very clean surface, and then a, a pin under the fuselage, you make a terrible drag, so it only uses, only use it during the final approach. So we are about to land. We turn the, we are at the land now. We are very slow, under 185 knots, and I turn right. Now we are intercepting the runway. You shall see the runway in your, in your view, if it's a clean day, clear skies. Uh, notice that there's a draw, like uh, there's here in your shape. You can see it on both sides of the runway, right? You can see on the paper. It means that this runway is equipped with ILS. Mm -hmm. ILS is an instrument landing system. The instrument landing system is a system that provides you help by telling you uh, your height and if you are on the right uh, angle on the runway. If you are on the, as we call, rank. 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 So we can imagine the runway here. The ILS is like this, and it tells you where you are. If you are correct, if you are too high or too low, right? It tells you right where you are and which action you should take if you are not in the right position. But since uh, since it, uh, it has an ILS, you could uh, you could activate it by putting the frequency of the line. The ILS is formed by a frequency and a course. The frequency is uh, because it's like a radio point, light on the end of the runway. So this frequency you should put at night one, which will be here, besides the radio. You are here, as I explained before, the radio is here, the ILS frequency is beside it. You put ILS frequency there, and the course, because you choose the, the frequency of the radio, but the radio doesn't know where to search for you. You must search the exact position that you are. And in this case, it's 016. You just put course 016. The course can be found here. This is course. This is course. And you put course 016, the frequency, and your previous flight display, it shall appear like two diamonds, telling if you are too high or too low, or if you are too much on the left or too much on the right. So you must fly the airplane by following this, this little time. Also, a drawer of the runway will appear here. It will appear like a runway. And if you are two on the right, she will appear more to the left. And you must try to intercept it, right? Then the airplane 
equipped with this kind of so technology. What's that called? Is that telescope? Light scope. Light scope. Light scope. Light scope. Yeah. And the aircraft, uh, he does that by himself. If it's the old pilot, he can land alone the airplane by just following the the frequencies here. But there are no, there are not all the airports equipped with it, and there are not all the aircraft equipped with it. Uh -huh. So we only use uh, really good ILS that really can land an airplane without touching the controls on a very, very, very busy airport, which is uh, often affected with climate change. Because you only use ILS on a cloudy sky that you can't see the ground, then you follow the instrument, otherwise you can do by yourself. It increases your abilities. But we are in perfect conditions, uh, the, so you cannot fly an airplane, so you must follow the other pilot. But here in, in Brisbane, we are equipped with ILS, but it's not a 100% complete ILS. So in, let's say, you do see another chart, but like in 800 feet, you must turn off the other pilot and run by yourself. So all these, these instructions that I told you will be only useful until 800,000 feet. After 800 feet, uh, you'll be by yourself. You must turn off the other pilot. The other pilot is here. This four little squares there is the other pilot, but to disengage it, you must, this square, this rectangle, white rectangle, you must pull it off. Like a push it off. Pull it. Pull it off. And it makes like a little sound, and you use your controls. After you land the airplane, if, if you, you landed it, <laughs> you will be able to break it. There's an auto break, I forgot to tell you. The auto break is located uh, here. Here's the auto break. The auto break is a break automatic. <laughs> it's an automatic break. Uh, you should turn it on while you are descending. And there's a levels. You can choose level one, two, three, or four. Four for shorter runways and one for longer runways. Uh, here in Brisbane, you use two or three, depending on the situation. But mostly two. If it's raining, it's two. If it's not, it's three. Uh, but let's suppose you will use auto break two. The brake will, the airplane will break automatically. The spoilers are also automatic. After you landed this little guy, the the spoiler that that I explained before will open automatically because it will sit the airplane down because after you touch you still got a little lift and so the brakes are not 100% efficient because the airplane is still floating in the runway so these spoilers make him sit it, it uh, stops the lift any lift that rests from the flight it stops so it really pushes the airplane down so it really grabs the runway stop after that all, you are not allowed to taxi if you have not another pilot. Even if there are two pilots there, let's imagine that one pilot is incapable to fly the airplane and only one pilot is able to, to land it. He will land it, but he is not allowed to taxi. You must only taxi, you must get out from the runway into the gate if there are two pilots. You cannot do that alone. You can, but the laws said no. So after taxi the, is the name of the taking the route to a gate? Yes. Okay. So it's sometimes I say some are not the words and I don't know. <laughs> but taxi will be like getting out from the runway and going to the docks and the base from the runway. Uh, but yeah, be able to land one now. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So I think I think next time you enter an airplane, you Pray for that both pilots still be alive. <laughs> no, because somebody else, somebody knows how to land an airplane. Yeah, somebody told me, but I have no idea how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's see the YouTube. <laughs> That's my favorite game. <laughs> I don't know if it's coming from me. It's only for okay. Brisbane. Yeah, it's only for Brisbane. You can go back to Brisbane. Okay. <laughs> back to Brisbane, take the ship on you, just in case. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Very brief. Yeah, I didn't explain all the details. <laughs> yeah, better because it's complicated to follow. So. Thanks for that. Yeah. Well, well done. Uh, can I?